We are here at Penticton Foundry and we are gonna be pouring some molten metal today. Basically, there's not a lot of parts on our truck that are custom, but the axle mounts are. The part that mounts the axle to the suspension, because it's an E-axle, it's got a little bit different mount. How are we gonna make that? We are dedicated to using as many parts made in Canada or North America as we can. We only go to China as a last resort when that part isn't manufactured, because I believe we can actually do this here, and Penticton Foundry is a great example of the industry. This plant is only two hours away from our shop. It's been here since 1935, and we've been working together to make these axle mounts. A few weeks ago, we had those 3D printed mounts. What we did is we put them in there, made sure it fit under the suspension. Then we sent the 3D models over to Chad. Chad then basically sent it off to his guys in his department. They put it into a sand casting. So they take the axle, put it into the sand, that forms a mold, and then you pour the molten steel in there and touch it up. I know kind of how it works, but we should probably just let the expert explain how a foundry works, what the process is. So this is Chad. He is here to give us our little tour and a walkthrough of how we made these axle mounts. So my name is Chad Genthis. I'm technical liaison at Penticton Foundry. Uh, we've been working with Edison for the last couple months on making their axle mount. They sent us a solid model. Our pattern makers converted that to a pattern. We were able to make the sample castings. We went through the process. They approved them. Today, they, they're here to actually see one of their molds being broken out and looking at a finished product. pattern storage facility. If you look down the line, you can see that we hold thousands of patterns for our customers. Each one of these patterns is used to make the molds for the castings we're making for our customers. All these little patterns are cope and drag as well, but they're used to make the cores for the castings we make. So they could be anything from this guy, little guy looks like a locator that um, is used to put in a mold to help line the cope and drag up so they don't have misalignment in the casting. We could have something like this guy here is um, a break off core. What this is is just a, a little ring of sand that sits on underneath the riser. It makes it easier to knock the riser off the casting in the process of breaking out the casting. So as you can see some of these patterns are about 50 years old. Um, this one here gets filled with sand and it makes the core for a lifting lug on a pump casing. This here is a pattern for the high chrome iron liner pipes that we make. This is the core box. And then if you look across here, these are all the different dimensions of pipes that we make. We make um, some straight, mini straight pipes and then some elbow piping. Here's an example. This would be, this is a core for a 26 inch and a half, 26 and a half inch elbow that we make. All these different um, patterns here, the cores, core boxes for all the pipes we make. Penticton Foundry, um, we make, about 70% of the metal we pour is high chrome white iron. High chrome white iron is a abrasion resistant iron. It's very hard, about 650 Brunel. It's good in applications where you have high wear problems in the mining industry. Once the part is worn out, we're able to buy it back and break it up into pieces that fit in our furnace and then we're able to melt it and make new parts. We can make the exact same part that this was before using scrap material. So at Penticton Foundry, we also make ductile iron along with high chrome white iron. So the recipe, it's a lot like making a cake where you have, you need your ingredients and the ingredients we have for making our ductile iron, we use a, a pig iron that we source from Sorel, Rio Tinto, Quebec. And then we use a recycled rail scrap. So we have the other track material over here, like the rail, the ties and the squiggly parts. The axle mounts that we made for Edison were made from ductile iron. Here's an example of a recipe for ductile iron. Our furnaces are 5,000 pounds. Uh, so we have all this weighed out by a weight percent. You can see 1,500 pounds of pig iron, the OTM, which is other track material. The total volume or total weight is about 5,000 pounds. It's all weighed on the scale over here. So once we make up the recipe, it gets loaded up onto the melt deck here. The raw materials go into the furnace, they're melted. And um, once they're melted, they're transferred to a ladle. From the ladle, they take it out to the mold and pour. Okay, this is one of the cool things that I like about this is that everything is being recycled here. So I mean, 
behind you, you got old railway ties. We got old parts, steel parts coming in. They take that steel, melt it down and make something new out of it. It's just, it's pure recycling. So we just finished filling up this core box with the sand. This is the, uh, before it sets off. And once he takes away from the box, this is what you get in the end. That would be internal dimensions for a volute casting that we make. Here is another example of a finished core. This is made with the silica sand, the same as the other cores that we just witnessed. This is the internal dimensions of a pump casing. The other thing that we've done is we put a mold wash on here, a ceramic wash that helps prevent metal from penetrating into the sand and gives you a nice surface finish on the inside of the casting. From there, the next step is we'll be moving over to the molding area. From here, this mold would go down to pouring. We have three 5,000 pound induction melting furnaces. While he's melting the metal, you know, you're operating at high temperatures and the metal reacts with the atmosphere. So you get a slag on top. So what we got to watch is him taking, removing any slag, taking it out of the metal and putting it into the slag bin. We also got to watch them empty the furnace into a ladle and then transfer the ladle across to the pouring floor. Edison's getting to witness the most exciting part of the foundry is watching metal being poured. It takes about two hours to melt 5,000 pounds of metal. And you know, when it was ready, the tapping temperature is approximately 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit for all the people that would still work in Imperial. Once that's full, it allows us to go through the rollover machine and then go around the line to be cleaned up. Today we were going to watch them shake out the casting and you're going to see how the Edison castings look on the runner bar still. Also doing a final inspection on it to make sure that um, there's no damage or it's going to show up because whatever you have in the pattern is what's going to show up on the casting. So it's his responsibility as the molder to make sure that that is clean as it possibly can. Once that's shaken out, we're going to go through the process or you're going to watch um, Jacob cut the runner bars and separate the castings from the runner bar. From there, we will go over and watch the grinder clean up the, the last bit of like, any flashing or part line cleanup and remove the risers from the casting, just so you, you can see now that you'll have this nice finished product. And from there, like, as a final step, we run our, all our castings through a, a shot blasting machine, a shot peening, a, we use steel shot. The size of the shot is perfect for giving our castings a nice surface finish. Make it look nice, clean up any remaining sand and there you have the end product, right? We got to see the very final piece of casting. Through. There we go. That is a finished piece right there. Now we'll take it over, get the holes machined out, get back to the truck. That is a wrap. We now have a made in Canada axle hanger for our trucks. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour today. Um, you got to see the process start from finish, from patterns to cores, to molding, and then pouring in the end. Um, and then also seeing your, your casting as a finished product. Um, thank you for um, coming to Penticton Foundry today. And if you need any um, castings in the future, iron castings, abrasion resistant castings, check us out. Yeah, highly recommend these guys. If you need some custom metal parts made, make sure you check out Penticton Foundry. These guys have been absolutely fantastic to work with. I just want to thank everyone that's invested with Edison Motors. You guys know we don't have venture capital. We don't have that kind of money. We told them no. We are invested and owned by the fans like you who are watching this video. You guys supported us all the way when it was just an idea through building Carl to building Topsy. And now as we go back into our next production run, taking this next step. So all of you that supported us, invested with us, thank you so, so much. We appreciate it more than you know.